Today I am off to Bengaluru to collect my new uniform and to complete some office chores and I should be back by evening. En route to Bengaluru we are deep diving into a topic that's straight out of a movie dual engine failure and dual engine flame out in commercial jets. What is dual engine failure and dual engine flame out? How and why does it happen? What happens if it happens? What is a backup? How does a pilot handle it? We'll break down what these terms mean. So fasten your seat belts and get ready. For those new here, I'm Captain Mac, an ex Airbus, and currently a training captain on Boeing Triple Seven, and your guide to the amazing world of aviation. In this channel, I break down complex aviation topics using simple, easy to understand language, so everyone can get a pilot's perspective. Just imagine you're flying high above the clouds at 36,000 feet. Everything is smooth until both the engines go silent. Total power loss. What would you do? But uh, could a massive aircraft actually glide without engines? How long could it stay in the air? Uh, could the pilots save the day? And this exactly is called a dual engine failure, means both the engines on the jet stop producing thrust at the same time. And a dual engine flame out is something similar to this, but it is a specific type of failure where the engine literally flames out, that is the combustion process stops and the engines shut down. Can you guess how rare it is for both the engines to fail at the same time on a modern jet? Trust me, it's less likely than winning a lottery. How often do engines actually fail in general aviation? Commercial jet engines are built to be super reliable. The chances of a single engine failure is about 1 in a million flight hours. Dual engine failure? That's even rare but it happens. Statistically, for piston engines, the failure rate is about 1 per 3200 flight hours. While for turbine engines, a single failure is 1 per 375,000 flight hours. Now, let's analyze and find out why and how does it happen. Here are a few reasons why this could happen. Bird strikes. Yes, flying through a flock of birds can damage both the engines. Remember the famous miracle on the Hudson? It happened when geese took out both the engines of an Airbus 320, forcing it to land on a river. The second main reason could be fuel starvation or contamination. If the plane runs out of fuel or the fuel gets contaminated with water or if the wrong type of fuel is fed, both the engines can shut down. Another reason could be fuel icing or fuel freezing. At high altitudes, ice can block the fuel lines starving the engines of fuel. And this one is really scary. Volcanic ash, hail or heavy rain Flying through volcanic ash or severe weather can cause both the engines to flame out. And of course, internal technical failures like electrical failures, sensor failures and mechanical failures can also cause both engines to shut down. And finally, human error. Well, very rare though, but it has happened where a perfectly running engine has been shut down instead of shutting down a faulty engine. Fun fact is, there have only been about 7 documented dual engine failure accidents in the last 70 years. Did you know that jet engines work like giant vacuum and fire machines? They suck in air, mix it with fuel, ignite it and blow it out. If anything blocks this chain, the engine can flame out. Now let's discuss what happens to the plane if this happens. The aircraft does not fall out of the sky. Modern jets are designed to glide even with no engine power. Think of it like a paper plane. Once it starts flying, it keeps going forward even if you're not pushing it. The only thing you need to understand here is, moment you have dual engine failure, you need to start gliding. And this keeps the airflow over the wings because of which you'll have a controlled descent. So the only thing that is going to save you under such situation is the altitude at which the aircraft is flying. Higher the altitude, safer you are. For example, at a cruising altitude of about 36,000 feet, a Boeing 777 can glide around 60 nautical miles, that's roughly about 110 kilometers. And the pilots have roughly about 15 to 20 minutes to troubleshoot, try to restart the engines or find a safe place to land. And now let's discuss about the backup systems that kick in. Ram air turbine or rat. This is a small propeller that pops out and uses the air rushing by to generate emergency power for critical systems like flight controls and instruments. 
batteries and APU which is also known as auxiliary power unit. These provide backup electric power. Apart from these, modern aircrafts have multiple layers of backup to keep essential systems running. These systems put together keep the pilot in full control even when everything else fails. Now let's discuss about how pilots handle such emergencies. Every pilot is trained to handle such a situation in the simulator and only hopes that it never happens. But if it happens, first thing that you would do is to aviate, fly the aircraft. Second would be to navigate, that is turn towards the nearest airport or a landing spot. Third is to communicate, that is to declare an emergency to the ATC. Fourth, troubleshoot, try to restart the engines. Now, let me tell you some real life incidences that inspired aviation training. US Airways 1549, both engines failed due to bird strike. Landed in the Hudson River, all survived. British Airways Flight 9, flew through volcanic ash. All four engines flamed out, restarted them after descending. Air Transit 236, massive fuel leak, glided for about 120 km to land safely at Azores. Each of these cases changed how pilots train and how planes are designed. Can situations like these be completely avoided? Well, not completely, but could be minimized. Fuel systems are constantly monitored. Pilots avoid volcanic ash via satellite data and no temps. Airports use bird scaring systems like, like firecrackers and drones. Airplanes undergo frequent engine checks and maintenance. Most dual engine failures are caused by external factors, not by aircraft design flaws. Pilots regularly train for engine failures, including dual engine scenarios and simulators. Even with both engines out, pilots have time and options. Modern jets are incredibly well designed for safety. So yes, dual engine failure is rare, but it's not a death sentence. Pilots are trained, planes are built for it, and backup systems are smarter than ever. And today's question for you all is, would you even know if your engines failed while flying as a passenger? If yes, how? What would you do if your plane suddenly had no engine power? Drop your answers and thoughts in the comments. I just love reading them. Thanks for watching. If you find this interesting, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more aviation insights and let me know what topic you want to be discussed next. Until then, keep your curiosity flying high and your questions coming. And with this, I am back home completing all my chores. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well. See you all in the next one. Till then, remember me in your prayers and God bless. Bye bye.